Alright everyone, Cody here. Welcome back to Chicken Hole Base. Ooh. Ooh. Have a look at this that I just found out on the uh, EVA. Harmless weather instrument. Fell out of the sky. <laughs> yeah, I'll uh, pack this up and ship it back to them. Anyway, I'm gonna get the rest of my suit off here. Gotta tuck my collar back in. There we go. Copper's heavy, it's very hot, but also keeps my bones strong, so. Yep. Okay, the suit is off. Well, mostly, I still got my undergarments on. Oh, hey bub, here he is. Hey, how you doing? You doing good, huh? We getting you fattened up for winter? Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> Alright, it's getting dark, so let's see what we can do with a little bit of artificial lighting there. That's better. <laughs> I'm always having issues with lighting. Anyway, you can see I've changed into my jammies. And Bud and I are about to go to bed. So, you can see over here is what I've been doing. Since the nights have been getting colder, I've moved down to the lower bunk. See, I've insulated this on all sides, top, bottom, and everything. And uh, so I can just uh, curl up in here like a little cocoon. It's nice and warm. <laughs> brighter now. Let's feed the cat. Let's uh, boot up Robo Cody and take control of him. That way we don't have to suit up and go out ourselves and to have a look at the greenhouse, shall we? Okay. Ah, there he is, plugged into a current bush. You may notice his appearance has changed. This is the cold weather configuration. He also now has the ability to add and remove items automatically depending on temperature and conditions. So expect his appearance to continue to change. Anyway, let's have him pick up the camera. As you can see, the plants have grown since the last episode. All the way to the ceiling now. Uh, the basil is looking like it's about done. I let it flower. And once they flower and go to seed, the plant pretty much dies. So we'll get that pulled out of here in a little bit. Uh, as you can see, what I thought was an eggplant turned out to be a bell pepper. That's cool. See, it's growing. Yeah, look at these tomatoes, they're taller than me. I guess this is proof that you can actually grow plants inside of these opaque tanks. Or translucent, whatever the word is. <laughs> oh, the camera's all fogging up. What I wanted to show you though, is we've got a problem. See this pepper plant here? It's just covered in aphids. See that? It's sucking the life right out of it. See this pepper over here hasn't been quite as attacked yet, it's still doing pretty much okay. This one's looking so sad. This one in here, gosh look at that. So the first thing I want to try is something we might be able to do on Mars, because what does Mars have? 
a lot of carbon dioxide. You could run a compressor and compress the carbon into the greenhouse. And what does air breathing insects need? Well, they need oxygen and they don't like CO2. If there's too much carbon dioxide, they'll die. So, here's what I'm doing. I'm sealing up the greenhouse, making it completely airtight. As you can see, I've started there by screwing some panels over those holes. I'm going to get some dry ice, bring it in here, throw it in a bucket of water, seal it up, leave, and uh, you'll see what it does. Suppose before we get too carried away, I should harvest all this fruit. You see, some of the jalapenos are even turning red, overdone. And also, look at these tomatoes under here. Look at the size of them. Huh, we got a mushroom stuck to it. Looks like the remains of a shaggy ink cap. I guess the mushrooms I put in here did end up fruiting, but uh, of course they dissolve and I must have missed them. I'll just throw these in my bag here. And while I'll also go through and pick all these peppers. Very sticky, covered in aphids and their excrement. I'll have to wash everything. Hopefully we'll get those aphids taken care of. Just look at that bountiful first harvest. <laughs> now to you chop it up and... Uh, oops. Ah, oh, don't worry. He's quite durable. And here's the salsa. It is extremely hot. <laughs> Here's a chunk of dry ice cut from the polar ice cap. Let's see what we got. 2.3 kilograms by the looks of it. Actually started with 10. Lost a lot in transport. Might need to find a different method of transporting the CO2. But let's try it anyway. What I like about the CO2 is that in low concentrations it's harmless to humans. It leaves no residue and it's actually a food for the plants. If it works, this is an ideal insecticide. That should do her. Although to speed things along, I'm gonna give it a good whack and break it apart. Okay, that did it. Let's turn the fan on. Yeah, what's wrong with that? <laughs> Look at that CO2 concentration going up. I better get out of here. Alright bees, you can't come in here. Not for a while. Oh, yeah. well, there it is. It's not completely airtight, but that's kind of intentional. Now, I don't want it building up pressure just yet. Have a look in there. See what we can see. Most of the fog's gone away. I was kind of hoping the whole thing would fill up with fog. Oh well, you can still hear the CO2 bubbling away. Oh hey, it's building up a little bit of pressure. <laughs> this fly is definitely not doing so good. After about an hour, the flies appeared to be dead, although they might have just been asleep, couldn't quite tell. Uh, the CO2 concentration, by the way, uh, should have ended up being about 10%. So after six hours, the cover on the greenhouse blew off. I suspect it might have something to do with the fact that the sun was setting at the time. Maybe a sudden pressure differential occurred when the temperature changed. I'm not sure exactly. Maybe it like sucked in and then blew out. Anyway, let's put the CO2 detector back inside, see what's going on, and then go around and turn the fan back on. After the first hour, I turned it off to conserve battery power. Okay, let it air out for about an hour. Down to fairly low levels now. Let's go have a look at the aphids. Let's 
definitely flies buzzing around. There's one dead in the water. Let me uh, turn the brightness up a little bit. Yeah, they're still alive and walking. Oh, buddy decided to come see me. You doing, bub? Yeah, it's aired out. I can't feel any carbon dioxide. Yeah, the aphids are still alive. Didn't touch them. Okay, well. 10% CO2 was not enough. More CO2, more time. For the second attempt, instead of dry ice, I used an aluminum cylinder filled with 20 pounds of CO2. Enough to bring the concentration in the greenhouse, assuming no losses, up to 40%. Which, according to my research, should be high enough to kill the aphids. In order to stop the pressure buildup, I allowed the gas to vent from the top. I also did not turn the fan on until all the CO2 was in and the vent was closed. Ooh, it's getting cold. CO2 levels are definitely higher near the greenhouse. Just using it to kind of go around and check for leaks. I bet it's all coming from right here. Yeah, of course it's going to go up. Well, it's the next day. As you can see, the CO2 canister is light enough. It now can float. <laughs> it's lost about 20 pounds. So all that CO2 has gone into the chamber. At the end of the second day, I could see that the plants were starting to look a little bit sickly. And I was also getting impatient, so I decided to open the greenhouse. The CO2 levels were still high enough to extinguish a torch. Let's overexpose it. <laughs> After letting the greenhouse air out, I went in and found the aphids were still crawling around. It was as if they were saying, Hey mate, strange weather we're having, huh? Anyway, I'm going to go back to sucking the life out of your plants. At this point, I realized I don't really want to grow the tomatoes throughout the winter. Not in a small greenhouse, anyway. And so, I decided to initiate the nuclear option. I checked the forecast and saw that we had a cold snap coming in a few days. And rather than trying to insulate the greenhouse, I opened the door and let it freeze. Well, it looks kind of cool. It's all frosty. <laughs> The aphids surely didn't know what hit them. Well, here we are. The greenhouse has been frozen. And it's warmed back up and the plants have all perished. Looks like I missed a few tomatoes. I guess they were harder to see before the leaves all wilted. Parsley made it. Yeah, parsley's okay. Some of the parsley's okay. That was pretty cold. Hopefully that's knocked out the aphids. Yeah, the banana. So I'm gonna cut and compost the strings as well. They are biodegradable. That'll save a lot of work. Well, I've got all the plants cut down and some of the dirt moved out. And I just uh, found this little girl. That, I'm sure you can tell, is a black widow spider. Take her outside somewhere.
So I put all the plant matter into the compost bin, and judging by the temperature increase, I must have gotten the ratio of ingredients much better this time. Hopefully it'll get hot enough to kill any aphid eggs. So that, for now, is the story of the greenhouse. I wanted to get the siding on this episode, but still waiting on the next supply drop. A few updates on some other things. First, one of the hens went missing for a few weeks. I figured a coyote or something got her. But, turns out, she was sitting on some eggs. <laughs> I also went and checked on the bees. They had plenty of honey. The population's a little low, but I think they'll be alright. Especially if they're shielded in their little cubby hole in the rock. And speaking of which, I chiseled that out a little bit more so the hive would fit better. Added wheels to the hive and a couple of wooden rails. Perhaps sometime I'll upgrade these to steel rails. Since this video will likely go up around Halloween, the last thing I'm going to have my Robo Avatar do is roll out the 500 gallon jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Thank you.